there's some crazy stuff going on in the world of Boeing. The Alaska Airlines CEO, who originally it was their plane that was affected by those loose door plugs, has now come out and said to NBC News that actually they have found many other aircraft that have been affected by that issue. Here's what he had to say. We found, you know, some uh, some loose bolts on uh, many of our MAX lines. So those many, yeah. Uh, so those are things that are going to be rectified uh, through the inspection process. Flight 1282 was a new Boeing MAX 9. The door plug covers an unused emergency exit in planes with fewer seats. It makes you mad. Tom, it makes you mad that we're finding issues like that on brand new airplanes. Thankfully, no one was sitting next to the plug when it exploded. Looking at that video and those photos, did you think, my God, what if somebody were sitting there? There were only seven open seats, and uh, we had a guardian angel, honestly, on that airplane. And I just want to take uh, uh, a moment here to say how sorry I am for our guests on Flight 1282 for what they experienced. It was just a terrifying flight. It, it makes me angry, Tom. Boeing is better than this, uh, and um, uh, Flight 1282 should never have happened. Should never have happened. That's a pretty diplomatic way of saying, screw you, Boeing. And yeah. uh, look, Boeing has had some real issues now in the last month. Let's put this up there. In the last 20 days, uh, Boeing 737 has a panel ripoff in midair. Cockpit windows cracked on January 13th. Boeing 737 stranded Anthony Blinken. <laughs> Boeing 747 cargo plane burned up in the sky. January 20th, Boeing plane in Atlanta loses a wheel. And January 25th, Boeing has to pause all production, quote, for a quality focus day. And I would say that's pretty warranted because the news is now coming out from the Seattle Times, which has done phenomenal investigations into Boeing now for years and years. And they say that the door plug that blew off of the Alaska Airlines MAX 9 jet this month was removed for repair and reinstalled by Boeing mechanics at its Renton assembly line, citing a person who was familiar with the matter. Boeing is refusing to comment, saying that they cannot do so because of the NTSB investigation. But this shows that currently, Boeing had the key role in installing and checking that part. Previously, Boeing was trying to uh, put some of the blame or at least cast doubt that it may have been their fault. It could have been their supplier, Spirit Aerosystems. What people forget is that Spirit Aerosystems was actually spun off by Boeing back in 2005. It was part of their whole like financial reorganization of the company. You could spin it off, but you could still buy from them. It's all just BS you know, in terms of uh, boosting their stock. Uh, same thing in terms of the stock buybacks. But what's coming to light now is is a genuine crisis, I think, for this, you know, for this company. Because you have now three incidents from Alaska Airlines to the 737 Maxes that literally fell out of the sky and killed hundreds of people in the span of, what, five, six years? Yeah. That's how you kill a 100-year-old company. Yeah. When people are dead, and as the CEO said, I mean, if somebody was sitting there, it's very possible they could have been sucked out of the sky. And actually, yeah. even if nobody was sitting there and that accident happened at higher altitude, from what I had read from aviation experts, absolutely it's on the table. For yeah. There was an incident uh, over a uh, United flight many, many years ago over, I think it was over the ocean. It was like somewhere to Honolulu. Same thing. It was like nine people got uh, sucked out of the plane. They never even found their bodies. They, yeah. Imagine that. That's a whole other story too. Right. And they definitely, I mean, they would have been directly responsible for that if it's their fault here. Yeah. When as a as a flyer, you start going from, oh man, I, I hope I can get the emergency row mm -hmm. so I can have extra leg, yes. leg room to like, <laughs> hope I don't get the emergency row because I might get <laughs> sucked out the door and into the sky. Then you know you have a problem. Yeah. Uh, Pete, Pete Buttigieg is announcing, you know, the Lever News has been doing great yeah, work they have the road as yes. news organization. Uh, following some of that, uh, the Buttigieg announced a quote, bigger picture exam okay. of Boeing issues. Thank you. I, I don't know what little picture uh, <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. Buttigieg and, and his FAA were looking at when it came to Boeing, because basically Boeing is it. Like Boeing is the is the kind of U.S. airline manufacturing. We have a duopoly like, in, in airlines, right? We have Airbus and we have Boeing. And, and it's in, it's a tragedy Boeing's because offense. It was uh, an Airbus plane that stranded Justin Trudeau. You remember hilariously? Okay, yeah, that's but right. I bet yeah. that was shenanigans yeah. on the part of somebody. Here's the thing: 
Here's why it matters the most. Airbus is a European company. So that means that, let's say, push comes to shove and we got to look out for ourselves, we've only got Boeing. That's it. They yeah. cranked out 100,000 planes in World War II. Nowadays, do we really trust U.S. pilots on top of a Boeing aircraft? I don't know. And they've got a century now you know, of, of work that they have done to invest in this brand. It was one of the most important and iconic brands in the world, I would say. Think, too, of the 80s and the story, You know, actually even before that, of the pride that the people in Seattle and Washington mm. had of working for this company, of knowing that millions of people set foot on their aircraft, that you know they had one of the low, the best safety rates in the entire world. And then, you know, all throughout the 90s and the 2000s, they start spinning off companies, they start reorganizing, they're moving their headquarters. It becomes basically a financial bank as opposed to an actual airline, or sorry, an aircraft manufacturing company. And now you really are reaping the rewards of that. And, we, and the craziest part is we all thought it had stopped after. Right. Those two planes fell. Right, it was a wake-up call for that. It should have been the right. wake-up. I mean, you, have, you know, hundreds of people who are dead. It's a problem with a culture. It's directly your fault. Yes, and it's yeah. and it's it's a culture. You, you saw it change. You know, coming out of the kind of New Deal era, you've got this this like consensus between the state and these giant corporations yes. that there's a, there's a welfare, general welfare mm -hmm. kind of attitude around the the business uh, approach. In the 80s and 90s, it becomes just pure financialization. Mm -hmm. Like, how do we extract as much capital? out of this company and give it to investors. And so that's why you see uh, them spending so much on you know, stock buybacks uh, and, and otherwise just uh, hiring a bunch of people who are like McKinsey types to look at their system and figure out ways that they can make it more profitable. The, the board, they, they, they lo Boeing lobbied against a, a rule that would have required that most of their board know what they're talking about when it comes to like flying an airplane, <laughs> because instead they- Wait, you mean having Nikki Haley on your board is not actually it turns a out, benefit to the company? It, it turns out that is that uh, it is saying? a benefit to the company in yeah. terms of uh, <laughs> profitability yeah, right. and making sure that you can keep the money flowing <laughs> yeah. into the company and then back out to investors. But yeah, it turns out Nikki Haley doesn't know a whole lot mm. about actually Shocking. flying or building an airplane. And, and they, they fought against a rule that would have required the board to know what they were doing. Yeah. And this is why it's tragic, is look at the Alaska Airlines guy. You know, at a certain point, it's like, and by the way, Alaska Airlines, I love Alaska Airlines. It's a great, yeah, it's great airline if you yeah. ever get the chance to fly it. Uh, the thing is, is that they're pissed because they're like, who else are we supposed to buy airplanes from? Yeah. Well, we had a deal. We paid you billions of dollars for these aircraft Make that we're supposed to fly. Yeah, that's it. It was like, we're supposed to just work. And now, you know, like he said, his brand is tarnished. It's not just him. United also, they were a huge purchaser of uh, 737 MAX 9s. Let's put this up there. The CEO of United and now Alaska Airlines are coming out and they are really pissed with Boeing and the manufacturer. I mean, what they're saying, and, and, and you have some of the quotes here, are just withering. They say, well, we're at least going to build a plan that doesn't have to have the MAX 10 in it. This is United Airlines. This is one of the largest airlines in the world. We will hope Boeing gets its certification at some point. We're just going to build an alternative plan that doesn't have that. That's devastating. And already, Delta actually just bought a ton of Airbuses. I believe that they already had existing in their stock. But the same problem remains is that if you have U.S. airlines not even buying from a U.S. company that increases all the problems with globalization, with where it's assembled. I mean, I saw a meme posted online. It's like, guys, you know, Airbus is a company where they barely work like 35 hours a week yes. and they, they can, they, they can a year these euros yeah. who barely and even they shut go to down work. in august they, they almost all of august yeah, like, Airbus shut down. down they barely go to work and they build better planes than us what the hell is going on in the on? south of france uh, <laughs> sipping sipping like uh yeah rosé exactly yeah. yeah they're going to provence and hanging out in burgundy <laughs> and all this and it's like and the jokes on us because our guys at boeing are getting paid like not that much money they barely have they even know, live in provence. functioning they, yes. they, they have non-functioning pensions and there's the CEOs and executives are flying around like gajillionaires. There's also been a really troubling report from View of the Wing. These are some airline-specific uh, aviation news outlets, which have been fantastic. And this one just came out a couple of days ago. It says, what Boeing whistleblower production line, quote, has an enormous volume of, def volume of defects on the MAX 9 and were not installed. This came 
one of their whistleblowers says, I will w save you waiting two years for NTSB to just come out and give it to you for free. The reason that door blew off is stated in black and white in its records. It is very stupid and it speaks volumes of the quality culture at certain portions of this business. Why did the left hand, you know, blah, 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 blah bolt fall out? Simple, as has been covered in numbers of articles. There are four bolts that prevent the mid-exit door plug from sliding up off the roof to stop fittings that take the actual pressurization loads in the aircraft. Uh, the, these four bolts were not installed when Boeing delivered the airplane. That's it. Our own records reflect this. How crazy is that? The four bolts that are supposed to be there to make sure that the door does not fall off in the middle of the sky did not work. It's just yeah. nuts. I mean, we're sorry, we're not installed on the aircraft whenever it was delivered to Alaska, which explains why their CEO is so angry there in that interview. So, you know, just yeah. another example of the degradation of that company. Some we talked, I did a monologue on about the financialization. It really is a tragedy and it gets to exactly what you said about the government and more. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.